So the last one, I bought a little cheap system and tore the motor out of it. And I said, it's going into a high-end deck. Well, this is the high-end deck it's going into, one that has a speed problem. You guys probably remember this one. This is the, the Nakamichi DR2 that uh, I had in a while back. And it had the, the motor problem that we took the motor apart and lubricated the bearings on it. Well, the motor itself has a, is still bad. The motor is changing speed on its own. So we're going to swap out the motor. We're going to try and put this motor that came out of this uh, Panasonic little combo unit. And see if this motor will work on this Nakamishi. If the mounting bracket is the same size, this should work just fine. So let's get started. That looks to be about the same size as that original. So I think this motor, this is a four wire motor so it's got a external speed control on this one. That's why I left the wires kind of a little longer here so they could connect a variable resistor to control the speed. But uh, this is counterclockwise, it's a 12 volt motor and it should fit in here and operate just fine. So I got to pull this mechanism apart to and change the pulley obviously to fit this motor in but I'm pretty confident that it will work and it will work properly and it'll be a lot better than this one here that wanders all over the place. Yeah play it it'll play fine for a while and then all of a sudden it's going fast and then it's going slow and that's what happens. Uh, this is the one that the bearing was uh, getting bad on and I pulled it apart and, and lubed the bearing up but obviously the bearing itself is worn and it's changing and it's got to be replaced and of course trying to find a new motor for a Nakamishi or any cassette deck these days is uh, it's like pulling teeth to try and find a motor the only way we're really able to get them is if we uh, find an old donor deck and pull the motor out this one here has got a plastic pulley on here should be able to pull this pulley off no problem there we go so no problem fitting this I'm sure that the holes are gonna line up just fine so first things first I need to remove the deck from the the rest of the unit if you guys remember to remove the deck I have to remove this screw and a couple screws from the bottom and then this this entire uh, transport will lift out. I'll just undo the, the plugs. There's three plugs here and there's a plug here and there's another plug over there. And that should and this plug here. I'm recording this so I know where the plugs go. That should allow me to remove this deck out of the, the chassis. So first we'll remove this screw and then the two on the bottom. The two on the bottom have a, a plate that has to come off too. So I'll remove this uh, this plate. Four screws right here to remove this plate and then there's these two screws in the base. And then the one on the top and the mechanism should lift out. Now this deck should lift right out. Should probably remove the door here first. So how these little motors operate is you give them their 12 volts positive and negative and they're going to run at full speed and then you provide your variable resistor across these ones and the lower the resistance the slower the motor gets and it'll take it right down to nothing if you were to short these two together for example this, the motor would completely stop this is your feedback circuit you put about a 30k pot 
and then you can adjust the pot to get your speed. It's the same as the pot did that was inside the motor, but in this case, there's no pot on the board, it's external. So where the pot would be would be normally connected across these two. This one's external. And this was done in the, in the day of the uh, cassette decks with the high speed dubbing. So they can have two separate controls, one for low speed and one for high speed. First we'll remove the record or the sorry the playback preamp board. Get that out of the way. And I gotta remove this bracket. It's held in place by a couple screws on the back here and uh, I believe there's one more one or two more screws over here if I remember. Anyway, we'll get that that motor or that that uh, bracket out of the way. Take this bracket out maybe here. This the screw and this one. And this should lift this whole bracket off like that. So then I can get the belt out of there and get the motor out. Just gonna see whether I can get the motor out. I don't want to have to disconnect these. Uh, there's wire ties that tie the record and play uh, wires to it, to the bracket. So I try not to uh, disturb them. I can just get the motor out of here without removing them, that's even better. Should be good. Should work. One screw is in. Let's see if we can get the other ones to line up. If they line up with the holes, which they should, then uh, we're laughing. That's two of the three screws. All right. Excellent. That motor fits. Perfect. Next we'll transfer the wires over. So this yellow wire here is the negative. Take the negative wire out from there and re replace it with the negative wire from the bad motor. There. That worked just fine. The positive is this one, which is the orange wire, and on this one there's two of them. And then these, these two I'm going to run to the external control, which I'll just mount on the back here. Okay, now I've got to thread the belt around. Belt here. Thread that around the two capstan. flywheels here and 
onto the uh, the motor. that the motor is, or the belt is riding true. We'll put a couple screws back in and make sure that everything is uh, in the correct position. belt is, as you can see, is going around both of the capstan shafts, turn both of the capstans the same direction, obviously because it's a dual capstan. And there's, there should be plenty of torque here on these. Okay, next we'll put the little circuit board back in. ready to mount back into the box itself. As I say, I'll have to add a control on here. We'll figure out what uh, value I need to put on here once I get it mounted and uh, get the speed set up. Fingers crossed this is going to work properly and it will be away from all the issues that this old motor had with it changing speed on its own. Oops, 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 I made one mistake. This is going to sit on the other side of this switch. Let me just fix that. There, that's a bit better. This is the uh, detection for whether the record tab is in place or not, and it has to sit on top of the switch so that it uh, presses it down. It's just a matter of loosening off that screw so that I could adjust it and put it back into position. And now I'll be able to put the deck in to the chassis. like that. Okay, now it's a matter of just plugging in the plugs to the appropriate connectors on the board. And there's one more plug 
goes in, just one or two more plugs that go in here. One goes in to this board and one goes into this other board. It goes right down there. That one. And this one went in over there, I think. Pretty sure that's the way the plugs were. Okay, I'm going to start out with a, a 25k pot. Now, it's, it needs a little more than 25k. It should be around a 47k pot, but I don't have one, so I'm adding a 10k resistor in series, which will give me a maximum of 35k, and that should be plenty to adjust my speed. And I've set it up so that I can, you know, tweak the speed up and down here. So let's just see what we get when we start playing here. Oh, pretty close to begin with, so let's just... See, I can adjust it. See how accurate I can get if I just use it. That sounds actually pretty close. I'll put the scope on it with tone and we'll see, but I'm going to attach the control permanently here onto the motor and get rid of the uh, leads. Okay, and then we'll bring some heat shrink tubing up to cover this connection and shrink it down with a, a flame. Without burning myself. Okay, that's one side done. We'll put uh, some heat shrink tubing around this other connection too, if I can get some on there. That'll protect the connection and then I'll just wrap this up or clip it up out of the way. I mean, it's really, it's not going to move anywhere. Even if it's just sitting in the case, this is not going to go anywhere. So let's set our speed. So I tuned it in by ear on the music. Here's the 440 test. That's pretty darn close. I may not have perfect pitch, but it's damn close. I don't know if I can get that any closer by just adjusting that little control here that I've put on the back of the motor. Of course, when I touch it, it'll probably shift slightly. Gotta let go of it before I measure. Give it a little tweak down. Oh, a little too low there. But we'll get it back.
Now that's pretty darn close. That's uh, I think as close as I'm going to get it. Let's uh, put some more music on to listen to this and then uh, we'll put this one together and send it back with the new motor. So there's our creation. Our speed control can just hang there. It's not going to do anything. It's not going to touch anything. There we go. I'm going to test run this one for a bit, but I think we're good to now, good to go now. As I say, this other motor that was in there, this is the one that uh, this is the one that we took apart because it was slow at starting up. I figured maybe we got it, but it, it didn't it didn't last. And then I was blaming the belt. I blamed the belt, but it wasn't the belt. It was the actual motor itself changing speed. So new motor with an external trimmer. Makes it real easy to adjust the speed on this one. No one's going to be sticking a screwdriver in the back of this motor and breaking anything. If it needs an adjustment, there it is. Check this out. This is a mix I did with uh, some radio automation software I've been using called Zara Radio. Listen to this. Automatic crossfading. Pretty neat software. If you're looking for uh, music software, automation software, Zara Radio, Z-A-R-A -A Radio. It's uh, it's for radio stations. It's free, but it's for it's for radio stations, and you can do all kinds of cool stuff. Create a playlist on the fly, for example. You can do voiceovers, everything. You could, you could run a radio station with it, but uh, it's pretty neat software, and it does a really good job of uh, mixing. And you can have multiple sound cards and everything. Anyway, I figured I'd give them a plug as I've been playing around with their software for my uh, for my music stuff and uh, making up mixtapes and stuff. It's uh, pretty neat stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.